Hi, everyone, and welcome to MTS's webinar for today, Reimagining Revenue Management Across the Resort Organization, sponsored by Ideas, a SaaS company. I'm Kat Shaw, the Director of Marketing and Content for Mountain Travel Symposium, and I'd like to uh, welcome all of you here today. And before I introduce our wonderful presenters, I'd like to go over a couple of webinar features. So there will be trivia throughout today's presentation. So make sure you have your keyboard at the ready because you'll be answering trivia questions via the chat function. Our presenters will get a little bit more into how exactly to do that once the trivia questions come up, but just be aware that that is coming and there are some cool prizes. And with that, I would like to introduce today's speakers. We have Samir Batnagar with Vail Resorts, Karen Cardwell, also with Vail Resorts, Courtney Jones with Ideas Revenue Solutions, and Kavita Patel uh, joining us today. So I'd like to welcome all of them onto the virtual MTS stage with us. And I am going to hand it over to Kavita. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Kat. I appreciate it. Um, we are so excited to um, be here today. I've got, you know, a great team of panelists here um, to kind of talk about how revenue management has changed. We um, have been, you know, um, 2020 kind of uh, turned us all around and, you know, we're, we're in a, but demand is back. And we're in a new world where things are shifting and changing. And today we're just going to have a, a really great casual dialogue on how revenue management has changed and how that's affecting our roles and within the resort. Um, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, give me one second here. All right. Um, so as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about reimagining revenue management across the entire resort and really kind of look into how things have shifted and changed. Um, we've got a great uh, line of panelists here with Karen and Samir and Courtney. So let's get things started a little bit with some fun. As I mentioned, this is going to be a fun, casual um, hour with lots of trivia and good conversation. So it is time to get back on our feet, right? As we all know, 2020 really wiped out the hospitality industry. Um, we were, I don't think any of us were really um, uh, ready for what had happened in 2020 with the pandemic. And um, with that uh, came some changes and shifts, but the good thing is we're ready to get on the other side of that mountain. Um, you know, demand is back. I'm sure you're all seeing this pandemic pent up summer demand and ski seasons literally right around the corner. We're going to blink and summer's going to be over. So let's talk a little bit about what that means for our resorts now that um, demand is coming back and what that means for our roles. And, um, you know, when things shift, uh, there are challenges that come with that. So we're going to talk a little bit with Karen and Samir and talk through some of those challenges and how we're addressing those at the resort level and how we can really kind of shift our focus and embrace this change. Um, but as I mentioned, we are going to have fun. So I'm going to let Courtney kind of come on and talk a little bit about the trivia that we're going to kind of have sprinkled in throughout the, um, throughout the uh, next hour. Thanks, Kavita. I get the fun part. Um, so we're going to do a little trivia today, keep everyone on their toes. And um, what we're going to do is flash up a couple of questions. And when it comes to the chat, we're going to do this via chat. If everyone can just make sure that when they do post their answer, so basically we're going to flash the question, 
And then the first person uh, to post the correct answer um, will win that question. And then we're gonna hand out some prizes at the end, um, the Amazon gift cards, which everyone loves. Um, so what we'll do is just make sure when you do that chat it, that it says to all panelists, as you can see here. So that way we're not all distracted by all the chats coming in and we can, you know, hunker answer in. So um, hopefully that makes sense. We'll give it a roll here um, first with um, a little test question. So what is the world's tallest um, hotel? Sorry, what lo what city <laughs> is that world? I think, I think Courtney uh, might have um, frozen up there. So I'm gonna repeat the question. What's the world's tallest hotel? Go ahead and, and type in your answer in the chat box. Can you hear me now? We can. All right, so if you answered Dubai, uh, the JW <laughs> yes. Marriott, then you answered correctly. Um, all right, so we're gonna sprinkle in a little bit of this. And again, the folks that answer the quickest and uh, the top three folks that answer the quickest with the correct answers are gonna win the Amazon gift cards. So let's get started here with um, talking a little bit about what our world looked like, you know, prior to 2020 and what it looks like today, right? So um, before 2020, you know, our roles were really, we were subject matter experts in our roles, right? Marketing did a great job doing marketing, sales did a great job doing their sales roles, and revenue management did a great job doing their revenue management role. And towards the end of, in 2019, we started seeing this unification of these roles, right? This, um, you know, convergence of these roles working together because resorts um, really started to realize that really, um, if, we, if we're going to want to increase profitability, that um, these teams should really be sort of working together. So we started seeing this unification come together. And then once 2020 hit, we really started, um, you know, it kind of moved us fast forward. And now we're really seeing that these teams are either all really working together, um, they're no longer um, in silos, or um, as we all know, the industry kind of changed when the industry shut down in 2020, many uh, folks left the industry, um, you know, whether, whether it was um, the resorts ended up shutting down or they just decided to leave the industry. And so, um, you know, we're seeing a little bit of whether the different teams are kind of working more together or even roles shifting where you're doing more than just revenue management, but maybe you're doing, you know, a little bit outside of your scope of your traditional role and kind of combining some of these roles. So we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, and with that comes some challenges, right? Um, when you've got a unification of roles or changes in roles or, um, you know, um, you know, an addition to the scope of your role, that comes with challenges. Are we um, training our employees and um, our staff uh, to really be to be efficient in these new roles? Um, are we enabling them with the right technology and the right de data? Right. If they're doing more, um, do we have the right tools for them to be able to do that? So, um, and then there's also uh, different challenges when it comes to. Um, the guest segments that are coming into um, our hotels as well. Um, that has shifted from what it was in 2019. So we're going to start off, and um, this is where Karen and Samir are going to kind of have their expertise. They're, they are veterans in the industry. Um, they're with Vail Resort, so they've probably seen it and done it all. And so we're going to really have this great dialogue and talk to them about um, some of the challenges and changes in revenue management today. But before we get started, we're going to hit you guys with another trivia question. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay now? Yep. All right. <laughs> um, synonym for doubt, which 11, uh, it's 11 letter word that could be used to describe much of 2020 and 2021 starts with a U. We already have some answers coming in. Good ones. So what we'll do is uh, we'll hold on to those and Kavita is actually gonna give you the answer here next. 
All right. So if you answered uncertainty, then you answered correct. Um, you know, 2020 um, or 2021 really is a time of uncertainty, right? We can't depend really on the data from 2020, right? Uh, things have shifted um, where uh, the demand isn't the same, the customer segmentation isn't the same, um, group, um, the groups that are coming in aren't the same, and some of our competitors that um, that we might not have had before are now our new competitors. So we've got to maintain this competitive and now um, advantage. So there's a lot of things to consider now and some of it is, is uncertain. Um, so Karen, let me ask you this. How did you manage the uncertainty, uncertainty of the hotel industry in 2020 and the unknowns of it? Um, and what are you doing in the future to kind of manage this sort of new business that's coming in? Thanks, Kavita. Welcome, everybody. So I would say that last year was mostly a year of survival and working smarter and harder. Usually you say working smarter, not harder, but I don't think that was anyone's reality last year. And as we reopened in the summer, that Certainty pivoted pretty quickly as most people in the mountain industry just saw more demand than we could handle. And that demand, like you said, hasn't really eased up. So assessing, pivoting, assessing, pivoting for anybody who watched the Friends reunion, um, watching the extra scenes around the pivot was hilarious and seeing the background of that. And I think that's kind of what our reality is. Looking into the future, Thinking about um, the resource issues that we have now, the housekeeping, um, front desk staff, I mean, food and beverage, it's all over the place. So some of the things that we did was no daily cleans. Um, is that going to stay? Is that going to come back? You know, Vail Resorts, we have a lot more condos than we do hotel product. And so just, again, assess and pivot, see what we need to do. Um, to help out operations while trying to get as much money as we can into the property. Thanks, Karen. Um, and Samir, I'll kind of ask you, um, you know, with this new demand that's coming back into the summertime, you know, how are you combing through all the data to kind of understand what are, what's the right guest? You know, are we getting the right guests at the right time? Um, many resorts have, you know, different data sources from your PMS to BI tools to your POS um, and sales and catering tools. So Samir, how are you combing through all this, all this data to really make the right informed decisions? Sure. Um, I guess basically, I think the first thing we have to understand is back to your point about uncertainty is that we can't really even look at you know, 20 to 20 numbers. And we can kind of take in consideration some of the things from 2019 when it's a normalized year, but at the same time, we kind of have to look forward and see what our pace is, um, understand what our competition is doing and, you know, understand who our customers are, where they're coming from, what their propensity to spend is. Um, so when we think about the data that we have, it's really all about understanding what that means and how we can really analyze it and how we can look deep into it um, to get a better understanding of who our customers are and what they want. Um, as far as like what our success goals are and our KPIs, um, you know, part of it has to be defined by how we're doing um, versus our competitors and whether we're losing more or we are looking at the decimetrics information, looking at the rock mount lodging information, and really understanding, um, you know, is our customer satisfied with us and everything we have that we need um, in order to survive. <laughs> Uh, I think another factor is just really being nimble. Um, as Karen mentioned, we're moving quite a bit. Um, so every week, our information changes, our forecasts change quite regularly. And I uh, keep in mind saying that we're never going to be 100% correct at all making the decisions with the data we have. And Samir, I, I, maybe it was just me, but it, it sounded like you were cutting in and out. Um, Karen, were you able to hear Samir's answers or, or is that just uh, it, it, it got garbled as it, as it went through, okay. <laughs> Maybe try it without the camera, next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Well, th Samir, thank you for the, those answers. We'll definitely kind of um, add on to that as we move forward here. And yeah, maybe um, without the camera might uh, help with um, 
with the audio there. So um, as Samir's doing that, let's get into another trivia question here. Okay, I'm gonna keep my uh, video off. So each year high schools around the world build robots and participate in the FRC, which stands for First Robotics What? All right, we have some answers coming through. Thanks everyone. Great. All right, so Kavita, I will roll it over to you. All right, so if you said competition, then you answered correctly. So I think um, Samir had mentioned a little bit of this in his answer in terms of um, the competitive strategy, you know, as our comps, as our market segmentations are changing, right? Um, between, you know, we're no longer, we might not see as many incentive groups coming into the resorts from corporations. We may not see as many um, large conferences and, and large groups coming in um, into the hotel. So we're really kind of shifting um, the, the different segmentation that is coming into the property, right? And when there's a shift in segmentation, um, you, that may lead to uh, new competition, right? Folks that you might not have um, had in your original comp set are now part of your comp set because of the, um, the same market segmentations that you're competing against. So um, Karen, let me ask you, what kind of changes did you see among your comp set and market segmentation? Yeah, we definitely some changes among the comp sets. The, it was ever changing, I think, with hotel closures, with reopenings, with partial closures, which we even did. If we had a hotel side and a condo side, we might have closed the hotel and kept the condos open. Um, owner stays, we had more people that own the units come take the inventory out. So that changed the amount of inventory available in the markets. If you had a reservation system for the mountain or if you didn't, it changed some things and especially government restrictions on how many households, the red, yellow, orange, like all over the place with what this past year looked like. And so it was, you know, it was, it was really different. We also, if you have brands in your market that also made a big difference because they have um, occupancy levels that they wanna hit or need to hit. And so they might've gotten more aggressive in certain times of the year. And everybody was just learning as we went about what it meant. And as you stated, for conference business, if you were a big group house or a big conference center versus if you didn't, um, if you have activations on the mountain, like all of it was, was changing throughout the whole season. And I think we've kind of gotten to that stabilized point now, which is, which is helpful. Um, but who knows what's going to come around the corner next. Yep, absolutely. You, you definitely make um, a good point, right? We don't know what's coming around the corner. Um, Samir, um, you know, these changes in the, in the comp set uh, that Karen was speaking with, you know, did those changes make it easier or harder for you to manage your competitive strategy? I mean, I would imagine that, you know, pre-2020, we all knew what our comp set was doing, right? We kind of had it dialed in in terms of what demand was going to look like if we saw pickup, um, you know, at, at a competitor's uh, resort, then we knew how that was going to affect our resort. You know, we, we really dialed into that. But now with the changes in who we're looking at with market segmented market segmentation and our competitors, um, it's definitely got to be harder uh, to sort of manage that competitive strategy. So Samir, tell me a little bit about how you manage that and maybe if you've got some best practices for the folks out there listening. Sure, um, I guess to answer the first part of your question, just wanna make sure, can you guys hear me okay? We can, yes. yeah. Perfect, okay, <laughs> I'll leave the camera off for now. Um, I guess to answer the first part of your question, as far as uh, did it make those changes easier or harder to manage the competitive strategy? Um, I think it, the competitive environment we're in was just a little bit of a challenging competitive environment. Um, but as far as managing competitive strategy, I think it's important to think about how we look at the competitors. Um, it was really hard to really take in consideration things like RevPAR, um, just because as you know, um, as Karen had mentioned, some of our, um, we had more higher owner usage. Um, so the available rooms that were available to transit were a little bit different. So what we kind of looked at, uh, I think was a little bit more is paid occupancy, 
um, as well as like our ADR and our percent changes versus our competitive percent changes as well. So I think we also kind of reimagined what a competitor meant and like what success meant uh, versus a competitor. So that's just one thing to, I guess, understand as far as overall competitive strategy. Um, you know, we did see rate reductions across the board, and that was a little bit tough to kind of deal with because I think at the beginning of the season, um, you know, we kind of kept our rates as high as we could, um, just because once you lose rate, it takes a little while uh, to get that back, and also nobody wants to race to the bottom. Um, so those are another things that we kind of saw and um, that we kind of had to manage through. And at the end of the day, I think what was important to us is making sure that uh, we were running a safe environment for our guests and a safe environment for our employees, um, as well as making sure that um, we were able to manage the business that was coming in. So I would almost suggest that the com competition, while it's important to understand what they were doing, um, was probably less important this year. Um, just it was more important to manage our business as best we could. Um, as Karen mentioned before, we were in a mode of survival uh, for the beginning part of the year. And then I would say in the latter half, of the season starting probably in January, February-ish um, is when things really started to drive up there and we were able to take advantage of our pricing and our positioning and the demand that we were capturing. And as we go forward into the future months, like it's definitely important for us to understand what the competition is doing, but at the same time, it's going to be really important for us to drive as much business as we possibly can into our markets. Yep, absolutely. Thanks so much, Samir. All right, so let's get into one more trivia question here. Uh, I think there's two, but we'll oh, go with yep. this one. Um, so <laughs> everyone ready? Um, what is output over input? It's a business equation and the ratio between output and input. All right. Let me see, we have some questions coming in. I mean, some answers coming in, so Kavita. Why don't you roll over here? We've All right. Over. So if you answered efficiency, then you answered correctly. Um, so, you know, it's definitely time to start shifting our focus, right? We mentioned that the, the roles are changing, um, you know, our customer segments are changing, our comp set is changing. Um, so, you know, there's a definite change in, um, you know, that unification of revenue management roles with sales and marketing. Um, and with that comes, um, as I mentioned earlier, training, um, right? If, if we're going outside of the scope of our traditional roles, then we have to train our teams. We have to enable them to be successful. And we have to give them the, the tools and the technology to be successful. Um, so Karen, let me ask you this. How do you see roles changing uh, for, for the industry or for Vail Resorts? Yeah, we, we actually, cause you know, the worst time ever to choose, but we did a reorg during the pandemic last year and kind of restructured the, the, the revenue management division. And we actually rebranded ourselves as revenue optimization uh, instead of managing it. And so as a department, we have many different facets to the department, but we decided to go with that brand name um, and then have like a dash and be strategy or analytics or transient sales or travel, travel partner sales. So it was a really um, big change. And of course, a lot of things that are happening. I know some of my team is probably on this call saying, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> but we yeah. did bring in more regional roles um, as well as our, our travel partner sales kind of into the mix a little bit more so that we were combining forces, um, doing more with less. Uh, really, you can only do that with automation. So trying to get more pieces out there into our world that had, um, as I like to use, efficiency -fy, um, our processes and get more consistent across the board. And so I think that you can, you can work on those kind of regional uh, pieces if you have similar business models. So if you have seasonality, even if somebody's in say Napa and another one's in the mountains, there's still some seasonality to that. And the other piece that we really focused on a lot more this year was how our decisions affected operations. 
and what those resource issues were so that we could stay on top of it. And it was actually in every one of our goals was to make sure that that partnership with operations was successful this year. Great. Thank you so much, Karen. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised that, that, that the changes that you guys have made, right? Um, and, you know, Samir, do you have any other sort of best practices in terms of how to really help your team be successful um, in, in, with the changing roles? Sure. Um, so there's going to be a lot more collaboration amongst the disciplines. So one of the best practices that we do is we've kind of refocused our ROCS meetings and we have um, you know, different discipline time during those rocks meetings. So the marketing team is actually um, presenting a little bit there. The group's strategy piece is being presented. And sorry, I use the term rocks. Um, that's our revenue optimization um, sell strategy meetings uh, for other, other companies might use different terminology. Um, but during our meetings, we just want to make sure that everyone kind of has a seat at the table and that we actually talk through things um, from a housekeeping perspective, uh, looking at resources. We want to make sure that our availability, um, what we're selling can actually be serviced as well. So there's conversations with operations um, as well. And there's just a higher level of engagement um, with our operations, our front office teams, our marketing teams, and our sales teams as well. Um, and inventory control is a major part of our strategies as well. So just really ensuring um, that everyone's communicating and we have the right, um, I guess, uh, products on the shelf for sales. Great. Thanks, Samir. So you guys are um, hitting on a lot of things that, that I want to get to in my next slide. But before I get to that, we're going to have another trivia question. This one is the final one. So make sure your keyboards are ready. Uh, finish the financial equation. Total income, less total cost. What does it equal? And we'll give a couple more coming in. All right. You guys are good. Begins with a P, Kavita. Profit. Um, that's right. If you answered profit, you answered correctly. And, um, you know, I love, um, you know, Karen and Samir and I did not practice this, but um, I think their previous question definitely um, led me, you know, leads right into my next slide, right, with, with profit optimization. I love that they rename their org to revenue optimization. And that really just goes hand in hand, right? There's a lot to think about in an organization, right? Whether it's room revenue, um, you know, channel optimization, you know, are these new guests, these different guests that we didn't have coming in in 2019, you know, what are they spending? What is their price elasticity? How are we ensuring that they're using all the different ancillary outlets and how much are we spending to acquire these guests, right? Um, and, you know, I think Karen and Samir both uh, mentioned different types of inventory. You were seeing that, you know, um, many, the, the um, increase in demand for vacation rentals, we're seeing increase in demand for glamping sites or outdoor um, accommodations. So we're definitely seeing a variety of different uh, inventory and we've got to really, you know, our executives, our owners, our board members are all wanting to see profitability overall for the entire resort. So um, Karen, let me ask you this, with the shift, um, you know, in 2019, a lot of our resorts had, um, you know, sort of standard market segmentations with conference and banquet, um, you know, groups and things like that. So, and in 2020, the, those big groups kind of got wiped out. So what has been the impact uh, to the resorts um, of not having conference business and how have you shifted your focus to other segmentation? Sure, I think um, it definitely varied by market. If we had a big conference center, it was a huge impact. If we didn't have as much conference business in, a, in an area, we were able to, to focus in on what we, what we had coming in. And I think that looking forward, without the groups, there's even been some cases that we've been able to make up for all of the difference because of that transient demand, especially in the mountain locations. But as we, as we move forward, we do still have to focus on groups that may need hands-on experience. If it's more of an educational piece, they can probably still do that like we're doing this webinar. 
versus if they're, you know, hands-on chiropractors or something like that, that actually need to be able to teach something hands-on. Um, the other big factor is that it does take, say, you know, 10 Smurf groups to get one conference business. And so while you think you can cut down your business, it actually takes a lot more of a sales team in order to make up that, that variance because there's, they're just not the same size, but we need the smaller size to handle what's going on in the market. And so it has been, it has definitely been a shift. Um, the other shift that has happened is where they're coming from. If it's a destination business versus a drive market and what they're willing to pay for. Um, but the good piece is that with a lot of remote working, I would say our weekday business last year was quite a bit better than it has been in the past. And how long will that continue? And can we close that gap between weekday and weekend pricing? So some of the things we've been looking at. Yeah, that, that's the, the weekday. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the weekday increase in demand, right? Because I mean, I was definitely one of those folks that, you know, um, Tahoe is just a drive away from me. And I was definitely, you know, one of those folks that wanted to, to, work up there and during and take lunch breaks on the ski lifts and things like that. So, um, and I saw a lot of that. So um, it's great that we're seeing a lot more of that weekday demand because of, um, you know, the work from home um, environment that we're in today as well. Um, Samir, in your previous, in the previous slide, um, you know, I think you mentioned about like housekeeping costs and, um, uh, you know, uh, Karen, you had mentioned that, you know, you're changing how often you're doing housekeeping. And some of that comes down to profitability. Some of that comes down to, um, you know, just making our, uh, helping our um, guests feel comfortable with the new protocols and hygiene standards. And so Samir, tell me a little bit about, you know, who's staying at your hotel now or at your resort right now? And what are you doing to really get the most out of that guest, you know, ensuring that they are using your ancillary outlets, ensuring that they're getting the right messaging with, uh, you know, the hygiene levels and cleanliness levels. So tell me a little bit about how you're really sort of honing in on that guest. Sure. Um, I guess as far as the customer that's staying at our properties right now, um, it really is primarily a transient leisure customer across the board. Um, that's who we see. There is, you know, being resort destinations, we don't really have corporate travelers obviously coming in, um, but there is some group coming in, just not um, the same type of group that we've had previously with the mice, mostly as Karen mentioned, Smurf business. Um, so as far as the you know the cleanliness protocols and everything, we do have everything that the industry standards are, um, and our reasoning for reducing housekeeping, um, obviously it's, there is a little bit of profit attached to that as well, but it's also from a guest safety perspective. And also from our staff safety perspective as well as less interactions um, and less you know touch points, the better overall. Um, so those are kind of some of the factors that we had to take into consideration uh, when looking at those services. Um, you know, Bell Resorts is definitely uh, we're a hospitality company and a lodging company, but we're also a mountain company as well. So we need to also make sure that the activities that we have out there um, are available for our customers and uh, we're executing them as well as possible. So everything from, you know, in the wintertime, we had the reservation system in place, uh, which was designed really to protect from a COVID perspective, but also to provide as good of a guest experience as we can with the capacity limits um, that are placed. As we look into the summer months, uh, you know, we have hiking available, we have bikes available, we have different um, just kind of options that are out there, scenic rides. Um, so just making sure that, you know, the operations team, um, the non-operations team um, is able to effectively service those customers as well as um, communicate through our reservations channels that these activities are actually available. So that's one of the benefits that we have as Vail is that um, from a reservations perspective, our call centers, they can not only um, help with the rooms, but they can also help with the other activities um, as well. So just making sure that all those different departments are collaborating and aligned um, with what's out there um, is really how we take care of our customers and make sure that we get as much answer we spend as we can from them. Um, and of course, provide a lifetime for this company. You cut out at the end there, Samir, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I, I, I'm um, excited to hear that, you know, Vail's got some really great 
sort of um, protocols in place when it comes to one, your hygiene and cleanliness, making your guests and staff feel safe. But also really it sounds like um, your call center and everybody within the organization is really aligned with you know, um, making sure that the activities part of your, pro you know, of um, your revenue lines and revenue streams are being optimized along with all the different types of inventory and restaurants and in different um, resort rooms. So um, yeah, the last the last piece that he talked about was experience of a lifetime. Um, I could I could hear that through the garble and that's the that's the piece of making sure, like you said, all everything's consolidated into one full experience for our, for our guests. Great, yeah. Well, you know, um, Karen, Samir, thank you guys so much for, um, you know, all this information that you guys have shared. You know, we talked a little bit about, you know, profit optimization for the entire resort. We talked about how um, our competitive strategies need to shift. Um, with the new segmentation and the new types of transient guests that were, were that are coming in. Um, we talked about our roles changing. So you guys um, that are listening are probably wondering, well, when do we need to take action? Well, right now, right? We're in the thick of things. Demand is coming back for the summer. I'm sure you're seeing it at your resorts right now. Um, you know, we've got the um, benefit of being in the leisure market. And um, so, you know, take advantage of that and really start implementing some of the things that you've heard today um, in your organization. Um, as I mentioned, just to kind of sum things up, you know, your revenue management um, organizations, the resort are probably already on this journey of shifting this role. Like as, as Vail uh, as Vail Resorts has already shifted into um, revenue optimization, I think you're calling your teams now, you know, your resorts are probably already on this journey, um, right? And so really kind of embrace that change and start taking a look at how you can be a part of this change, right? Start taking a look at, you know, forward-looking pricing and strategies you know, um, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, we don't know if there's going to be another phase, right? But start thinking outside of the next three to six months um, and think about what markets will you be focused on outside of those three to six months? What will happen if we do get into another phase or if something else happens, right? Um, how will your strategy shift? How will it be different? So start kind of thinking about what that's going to be uh, and be that go-to person. Um, as our roles change, as our the scope of the role changes, you know, you've got definitely got to be um, the person to, to embrace that, right? You will have a competitive competitive advantage as an individual if you're embracing that change and sort of going outside of the scope of your current role since these roles are definitely coming together. Um, you know, become a technology expert. As, um, as things shift, um, technology is gonna play um, a larger part into your roles. So definitely become a te technology ex um, expert and expand your function um, into what is marketing doing? What is the loyalty team doing? What is the sales team doing? Um, and really kind of be, be that go-to person. So as, um, as things change, you're embracing it and you're ready for the next shift. Um, hopefully we're, we're going to stabilize for the next few years before the next big shift happens, but, um, you know, be ready to, to, um, embrace whatever change comes along and be proactive with, um, the, you know, the technology and the, um, you know, sort of the training that you have at your fingertips. So I'm gonna leave it there, but I know you guys are all wondering who won um, the trivia game. So I'm gonna let Courtney kind of take over here. Okay, um, thanks again, everyone for participating. It was really fun to see all the answers um, come in and everyone was quick. Uh, so we have three winners um, and the first winner is Aaron Weiss um, with Sun Peaks. So congratulations, Aaron. We'll be getting in touch with you. Make sure we get you your uh, Amazon gift card. We have um, Kenta Takamori with Hakuba 47 in Japan. 
Um, so congratulations and thanks for joining. Um, so then we also have Mark Galt from uh, Ski the Northwest. And um, thank you guys so much. Again, we had some great um, answers and uh, it was really fun to, to have that kind of participation and learn some new things I learned for sure. Thanks so much, Courtney, and congratulations to all the winners. Um, and again, thank you to Karen and Samir for providing their insight and letting us know, you know, giving us their best practices and giving us some um, understanding of, of where the industry is going in the next year or two. So I'm gonna pass it back to Kat and um, I think we might have some time for Q&A, but I'll let Kat make that decision. <laughs> yes, we definitely do have um, some time for Q&A. And uh, so for the audience out there, if you have questions, we've gotten a couple submitted, but if um, you have questions, you can use the Q&A feature to submit those questions to our uh, panelists. So I am I'm going to get started with our first question and um, who, you know whomever wants to jump in first can um, can answer for us. So um, <clears throat> our question is, um, all of the changes and roles that have been mentioned during the webinar appear to have come about due to a domestic um, market as all places have had to em embrace. Um, but do you see that these transferred to the international market and is there now a shift in change towards how business can look at, um, at how businesses can look at the international visitor? So most, you know, most of the conversation was today was related to domestic, but how does that translate to international? Yeah, I can I can take um, a bit of that uh, as an answer. So luckily, um, in my travel partner team, we've got both um, domestic and international focus. And really, the international side of the business is, is still reliant on things opening and government restrictions uh, alleviating. It is a it is a super interesting role to play when the, the governments of each of the other countries have so much protections in place for their own um, uh, residents. So if you are in Europe or in different places that you have to cancel a reservation or um, a vacation, there's a lot of protections in place. And so having to adjust our business for that, if we have deposits or non-refundable deposits, like how does that translate into how that the wholesalers are gonna work with the business? So I think that that shift will come. I don't think it's happening quite yet because there is still more pieces out there um, in terms of restrictions. Even in Canada right now, the border is still not open for our resort up in Whistler. And so um, I think we've got some time before we see that full shift. Does anybody else wanna, wanna address that? Are we all, all happy with Karen's answer? <laughs> I'm happy with Karen's answer. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'm going to move on to our next question from Tammy. Tammy wants to know if there is a recommended revenue management course, or if, if not, how do you keep your revenue management chops up to date? So I, I think this is a great question. That is a great question. I'll, I'll start with, um, I took I took the Cornell course in, I think, 2003, maybe. It was quite a while ago um, online. And I think at the time it was, it was really eye-opening to me for people to be surprised about pricing per day <laughs> like versus once a year. And so I think a lot of things have changed at that point in time. There still wasn't, um, you know, courses in college that still related to this. I see that there is a comment in here about HSMAI resources. I think that's a great option to do some revenue management training there. Uh, I would also say just sign up for newsletters, a hotel now, there's Hotel Recovery 2020. There's just so much data out there that you can kind of just read and listen to. And, and hopefully this today gave some um, education to you as well, but uh, Kavita or, or Courtney, feel free to jump in as well, or Samir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll jump in there. Um, if you go to the ideas.com website, we definitely have some revenue management courses on, um, on the ideas site. We have um, quite a bit of information um, in terms of revenue management, and also during the pandemic, we, we um, put a lot of different um, 
sort of white papers out there. So definitely take a look at that um, in terms of revenue management 101 stuff. And then also HSMAI um, definitely has um, some things on their website as well. Um, we partner uh, uh, quite a bit with them and um, they have a lot of uh, revenue management resources. Um, so that's a great website to visit as well. And then just to add to that, I think uh, not only from a revenue management perspective, because I do think Revenue management has its fundamentals and its basics as far as understanding, you know, what the discipline is all about. But also, I think one of the key things is also understanding the software that you're using and keeping up to speed with how all that works, because every company uses different things, whether it's part of a chain or whether it's independent. And just really understanding, like, how your systems work is probably the most one of the most important parts of your education piece as well. Great, thank you everyone for weighing in and thank you, Tammy, for asking that question. Um, we've uh, got Emily here from Ideas has posted uh, a link to HSMAI uh, in the chat. So that should be helpful for everyone in our audience. Um, so I've got one more question here. And so we've seen a lot this season um, with, you know, variation in, in length of season. We've also seen a lot of variability in terms of season pass prices. And um, our, our question from, from Mark is wondering what you see in terms of profitability for various scenarios of you know, a lower price pass versus a longer season and, and kind of how that, um, how that impacts revenue management. Yeah, I'll try and give the... Um... Try and give an answer from the Vail Resort side that isn't isn't too surprising to people, but hopefully we'll give some extra education. the The play that Vail Resorts did, and and you know, I'll use public words, so <laughs> this should be too secret. Um, around the twenty percent discount was is a volume play, um, but it is an advanced commitment volume play, so that we get people locked in before the season. And we see that as, as a benefit um, so that people are ready for the season and can plan their vacation later. Plus we get their information. It's like our own version of a loyalty program like a Marriott Bonvoy or a Hilton. And so that we can contact these people, hopefully they'll make more than one trip rather than single trips. And if you've listened to you know Rusty speak on the icon side, there's from his point of view, it's, it's a little bit different business model. We collectively brought all the technology for all of our Vail Resorts together versus Icon still has some individual mountain, you know, independent thought and they're combined together on the Icon Pass. So it will be interesting to see how it goes as we, as we do push, but with having as many resorts as we do throughout the year or throughout the country um, and internationally, if, we can get you to take one big trip a year and then take more local trips since there are more local mountains, then that's a benefit to everybody. And from the lodging perspective, we just get more information to talk to more people. Great, thanks Karen for addressing that question. Um, and I just like to add that Emily's also put the links to um, the ideas resources that Kavita mentioned in the chat as well. So everyone should have those um, for further education. So um, since you know we've addressed all of the questions, I'd like to uh, wrap up the webinar and thank our panelists for joining us today, um, as well as ideas for sponsoring the webinar and bringing um, their friends from Vail Resort here to uh, talk about revenue management. So thank you all for joining us and thank you for um, being patient with some of our audio issues. We really appreciate that. And um, we're looking forward to having all of you join us on our next webinar. So thank you very much. Thanks thank everybody. You.